So we buy a lot of guns around here at T-Rex Arms, and we specifically buy a lot of one-offs. A lot of weird guns that I think you guys will find interesting or I just want to shoot because I'm interested in them. But over the last couple years as I've kind of been getting a little more focused back on training and just getting better at shooting and then also some more data intensive product testing, and not on firearms themselves, but on optics and lights and lasers and things like that. I've wanted duplicate rifles here in the armory that I can literally just grab. They're always zero. There's always, you know, I can literally pick a certain gun and I have every type of optic on that certain gun already mounted, zeroed, and ready to go. And uh, this weekend, I got fed up with our current situation. Uh, we have a lot of weird guns here, some customs, weird retro guns, Colts, Daniel Defenses, R5s, cool stuff. We'll keep some of those around and we'll do videos. But for my personal guns that I'm taking to the range and training with, my work guns, I just wanted four of the same gun that I can have a one to six scope on, an ACOG on, an EOTech, and then a tubular red dot. And I can literally shoot any kind of drill, all kinds of drills, and have all four of those guns staged ready to go. Uh, which also helps when it's super hot out, which it's, you know, July. As guns are heating up and I, you know, need to set them down to cool after shooting like three magazines, I can then pick up another gun and off I go. So inside this box, I have four BCM uppers. These are the MCMR, uh, Mark II, ELW, whatever uh, uppers. But uh, let's actually open this box up and we'll talk a little bit more about them once I actually get them out. Well, that's empty. That's not. Interesting packing job. All right, so one at a time, I've got a 16 inch, or this is the 14.5, a 14.5 MCMR. Um, this is the Mark II upper receiver and it's got the enhanced lightweight barrel. So cool. And of course it comes with some little things that I need to keep. It comes with some stickers I don't care about and that's that. <clears throat> and then the other three uppers are the 16 inch and this is also the Mark II upper receiver and uh, also the enhanced lightweight barrel. So an interesting thing about BCM in particular is these are historically considered uh, very good guns. They're, people don't necessarily know if they're at the high end of the spectrum with like, you know, Knight's Armament and some of the folks up there, uh, but BCMs are generally considered some of the better rifles on the market. Uh, they're plain, there's nothing super crazy flashy about them. They're just guns that work, which for me, this is essentially going back to uh, my beginnings because I started shooting BCMs. It was like the first legit uh, rifle manufacturer I really started shooting. And uh, now I'm going back to it um, instead of using, there's all kinds of other stuff on the market, but BCM is just, it's that tried and true. I just want to go back to it because I know exactly what I'm going to get. Um, the other interesting thing is the price point on these guns. Uh, these uppers are around $750 with a bolt carrier group, um, with an A2 muzzle device. Uh, they do not have a charging handle. I'm going to sub in my own uh, Radian charging handle so you can choose to buy them without. Uh, but. You know, compared to other manufacturers on the market, you know, Sons of Liberty Gunworks, the PSA Saber, and, and some other uppers out there, um, or even like a Daniel Defense, like Risk 3 upper that's $1,400, uh, these are considerably cheaper, but they're still a grade A upper that you can get, and they are much more, uh, they're much more in stock than they used to be. So you don't really have to go out and buy, you know, an upper from one of these other like Instagram companies because BCM's not in stock. You can literally go and purchase one of these from BCM and get it for like $750 with a bolt carrier group. These all have bolt carrier groups already uh, in the weapons. All I need to do is sub in charging handles and I'm good to go. The first thing I do when I get BCMs, because I have bought a few in the past and I know I've sold a ton of BCMs um, for BCM. I actually had a, a lovely phone call with Paul recently, um, is I wipe off all the grease. They have this grease they put on the guns that has a very unique smell. And when it comes to painting, you want to get rid of that before you paint and you just want to get rid of it in general. So I always take a rag and I literally just get the wiping. So that's good enough for now. That's the majority of the grease. So now if I decide to just go ahead and paint these right away in Lucas fashion, um, I can go ahead and do that and it's not gonna obviously cause any issues. Um, now the four different, uh, I'm not gonna bore you all with actually building these things out and I'm going to do other videos uh, doing different things with these rifles because what's really fun about buying a bunch of guns all at once that are fresh and that are new and that are unfired is I can do some tests 
uh, from the get-go on these uppers for groups. Uh, consistency between guns. Uh, I could chrono each upper and see what the round, you know, how fast the round's coming out of it. And that's what I plan on doing on the three 16-inch guns. The 14.5 is kind of an outlier. I bought this guy just to kind of have something a little bit different. He's going to get a laser and a red dot, and he's going to be a little bit more chatted out and probably have a mini suppressor, probably this guy right here, uh, Surefire RC2 Mini. Um, but the three 16-inch guns are going to be my main training guns. They're all identical. They're all the same. And one is going to have a SIG Tango 1-6. to So if I want to do LPVO type stuff, I have an upper for that. One upper is going to get an ACOG. And I'll probably swap between the TA02 and the TA31. So an ACOG, which matches up great to a 16-inch barrel. It's going to have an offset delta point as my primary close range solution, or aiming solution. And then one of the 16s will have an optic, probably an EOTech, because it's my, I want to say it's my favorite. There's a lot of good optics out there. I really like EOTech. I just go back to EOTech. I love the glass. I love the clarity. And now with our single dot EOTech EXPS 3s, uh, we brought the tan ones to market. They're making black ones already. You can get a single dot EOTech, which is super nice, and uh, that's what I'm going to run on this guy. Uh, this guy over here, I'm probably going to run this T2 on a 193, so this will be like my night vision uh, rifle setup. Um, so he'll get a T2. He'll get a peck. He will get a large Surefire. This guy will get a small Surefire. This guy will get a small Surefire, and this guy will get I don't know what. Um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put bipod mounts on the two magnified guns. It just makes, if I'm, if I'm checking for just kind of what the guns can do at distance, having a bipod is really nice for eliminating variables. I'm not shooting drills from a bipod. I'm just using it to collect data. So little m -lock bipod mounts for Harris uh, bipods are really convenient. They don't take up a lot of weight. They're not going to affect anything on the weapon long term. So this guy might get a Harris. If I want to run my big fancy MDT bipod for my one to six, I can just throw a Seekins pick rail section on the front. It will add a little bit of weight, but you know, it is what it is. And then I've got some prototype stocks that BCM sent me. So I'll probably test those a little bit on these guns, but I'm going to have these guns all built out. We're going to go to the range. We're going to test them. I'm going to start using them for my training. Um, and obviously also to like market some of the optics and stuff like that that we're selling. But these are going to be my main guns that I am shooting. And we're, I'm going to throw in the other weird stuff here and there for videos. But when it comes to me wanting to get better at shooting, I like to have guns that are consistent with each other so that I'm not like, okay, that weird R5 is throwing me off due to the weight, due to the gassing, due to the something. And then my time standards shooting that gun compared to, say, another gun aren't going to get in the way. Um, so consistency is really important. And uh, that's what I'm going to be doing with these four BCM rifles. So check back because we will have a video uh, with some results from testing the 316-inch guns, showing what they're doing. And then you'll see these in some other videos as well. Uh, maybe one video where I'm just shooting through all three guns so you guys can see what each of them, all four guns, so you can see what they do. And if you guys are interested in purchasing a high-end or a I mean, I would say it's a high-end high -end rifle without dropping insane buku bucks. Uh, BCM is still up there and they still make a great gun. They make great rails and they're no nonsense and their marketing is no nonsense as well, which I appreciate. They're not doing a bunch of stupid, dumb, retarded Instagram stuff. Um, they're just very practical and plain and I really like that about BCM and they've stayed true to that for the last like 15 years they've been in business. So uh, take care and I will see you guys next time.